Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video. This is Damon from Entereka and in today's session, we will be covering one of the most popular AWS offering that is Amazon EC2. So before we get started with the session, if you guys haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go down below and click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on any updates from us. Also, if you guys are interested in our AWS certification training, do check out the link given in the description below. So come, let's quickly go over the topic that we shall be discussing today. Firstly, we're going to understand what is Amazon EC2 and see why it's commonly used. Then check out its instance types, followed by a hands-on demo. Then we'll go ahead with the introduction to Amazon Machine Image or simply AMI. And then we'll walk through on how to create an AMI image. And moving on forward, we shall also see the introduction of Amazon Elastic Block Storage. Now followed by its network and security in Amazon EC2 and how to provision an EC2 instance. And lastly, we will be giving a brief introduction about what is load balancing and auto scaling. So without any further delay, let's get started with what exactly is Amazon EC2. Say whenever you run multiple application, it is certain that you require a server. So depending on the application that you are running, you might need only a few server or sometimes you might need a hundred of servers. The number of servers are all dependent as per your requirements. Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud actually provide you those virtual servers along with secure and resizable compute capacity in the cloud. Virtual in the sense that they are not physically existing but you can use them anywhere in the world without any limitation. Now with Amazon EC2, it makes it easier for you to obtain these virtual server. You simply choose the instance types you want, the template you would like to use, which could be based on Windows, Linux or Ubuntu, and launch the quantity you need. You can do this with a few clicks from the AWS Management Console or automate the process via the API using SDK in your choice of languages. Now within minutes, your instance will be up and running with full administrative control. Now, once you're done using your instances, you can simply terminate them and stop paying for them. Now, let's go on right ahead and see why EC2 is one of the most popular AWS offering. Now, with EC2, you can scale your instances up or down as per your requirement. Secondly, they can integrate with other services like S3, EBS, VPC, RDS, etc. And the best part is you pay only for the time your instances are running. So when you stop using your instances, you stop paying for them. Fourth part is you can launch your instances in one or more region as you already know the global infrastructure is divided into regions and inside the region you can have more than one availability zone which is nothing but your data center. Fifth part is you have the freedom to choose different operating system like Windows, Linux, Ubuntu etc. And lastly EC2 comes with a tight security network as EC2 work with virtual private cloud or VPC to provide you that secure network to all the resources which you are going to utilize. Now, moving on to the next topic, Amazon EC2 provide a range of instances which are designed for different use cases. Amazon EC2 provides instances optimized for compute, memory storage, and GPU processing. Now, they range from cluster compute instances designed for high performance computing workload to small economical instances for low volume applications. You can see here the different type of instance size and its use cases for different purposes. We shall also discuss these instances pricing. The first type of pricing is on-demand pricing. Now with on-demand pricing, you only have to pay for what you use. Now when you stop an instances, you simply stop paying for them. You can use your instance either to launch, stop, hibernate, start, reboot and terminate your instances. Now coming to the next pricing, we have reserve pricing. With reserve pricing, you obtain a significant discount by bidding over the on-demand price in return for a low one-time payment. The third pricing is Spot Instances. Now with Spot Instances, it lets you name the price you want to pay for your instances. You can do that by using market-based pricing and it can allow you to obtain compute capacity at a significant discount to that on-demand pricing. And lastly, we have a new type of pricing that is Saving Plans. Saving plans allow you to easily reduce your bill by making a commitment to compute usage, say for a period of one or three years term. Now there are two types of saving plans. One is compute saving plan and another is EC2 instance savings plan. Now compute saving plans provide the most flexibility and help reduce your cost up to 66% regardless of its instance family, its size, availability zone, region, operating system or tenancy. 
Now, whereas on the other hand, we have EC2 instance saving plans that provide the lowest price offering saving you up to 72% in exchange for a committed period of compute usage. I hope till here everyone is familiar with what EC2 is, its types and pricing. So let's quickly do a quick hands-on to see how simple it is to launch an instance. After that, I'll even show you guys how to host a server. Let's get started with the hands-on. And the first thing you need to do is go to AWS Management Console. From there, you can click on Amazon EC2. Click on services, click on EC2 and open that in the new tab. From there on, you can click on launch instance. Click on instant then launch instance. So you simply click on launch instance. We give it a name for your instance. Uh, in this case, I'll be naming it as Ubuntu demo and scroll down and click on open to which is a free tier by the way and simply click a new key pair scroll down and set your key pair if you guys don't know what is a key pair you need not worry i'll be explaining you guys what is a key pair and why do we need one in the later part of the video so simply click on dot ppk and click on create new key pair and we'll name that as ubuntu key for use and click on create key pair so we simply keep everything to default for now and click on launch instance once you click on that simply wait for a few minutes until then let me give you a brief walkthrough on ec2 dashboard once you click on that simply wait for a few minutes until then let me give you a brief walkthrough on the ec2 dashboard you can see here in the dashboard the instance that is running in your AWS management console. Say its instances, then the security groups, IP address, etc. And to the right here, we have a region where you'll be able to select any region based on your location nearer to you. If you have an instance running, you will be charged as long as your instance are running. So how will you be able to check which region your instances are running? Now for that, EC2 provided us with the function EC2 Global View. Now where you will be able to see how many instances are running in which region without having to select each and every region. Now, as you can see here, 8 instances are running in one region only. Now coming back to our instance, we can see that it is running. So the next thing that we need to do is host a website server. In order to do that, you simply copy the IP address and simply open PuTTY and you simply paste your IP address click on SSH and click on on and then paste your key pair which you have generated a few minutes ago and click here as Ubuntu for use click on OK click on open click on accept and simply click here Ubuntu will be logged into an Ubuntu terminal simply minimize the screen a bit so you guys can see so before we host a server the first thing you need to do is type this command sudo apt get update uh, so once the message prompt is done so the next thing you need to do is install apache 2 so in order to do that type on the code sudo apt get install apache2 click on yes and it's done so in order for our server to be hosted the next thing you need to do is go back to AWS management console go to description where in this part we need to change our security groups since we've been hosting a server we will be needing an HTTP Request. So in order to do that, you simply go on action and indent inbound rules and simply add on rule. Click on HTTP and for custom anyway IP version 4. Simply click on save. Once that is done, you can go back to your instance. Open to demo. Click on open to demo and simply click on the IP address. Go back to a new tab and simply paste your IP address. 
as you can see here we have been prompted with an apache to default page and if you guys wanted to replace this apache default pages you can do this is this file is located at slash var www slash html index.html so we can do that by simply go back to putty c command directory this is the direction of your apache as you can see here this file is located at slash var slash www slash html slash index dot html so we can do that by simply go back here and write here html and use an ls and you can see here the file name is index dot html now in order for us to make some changes on the file we simply have to remove it first so do remove index dot html which is the name of the file when that is done we can simply edit it in the html template by typing the code sudo nano index dot html we are provided with an html template welcome to edureka website So that will be our heading and simply provide a body. So put a new line. Right here is hello guys. This is Damon from Edureka. Simply close the body. And we closed on the HTML. Exit exit once that is done simply reload this page and you can see here you have already added that apache 2 file hello guys this is damon from edureka with that website name as welcome to edureka website so that is it guys for the hands-on on how to host a server now getting back to our presentation we shall understand what is amazon machine image so what is an amazon machine image so just as the name suggests, Amazon Machine Image is basically a template or information of your operating system to launch instances. So it can either be an Ubuntu, a window, and then Java, Python, etc. Where these files or these templates will be converted to an AMI template and create an N numbers of AMI template. Now when you launch an instance, you must first specify that AMI. So whenever you launch an instance, you can use multiple instances for a single AMI for the same configuration. In this case, we can use multiple instances for the same AMI, say V2. Or you can use different AMIs to launch different instances for different configuration like V2, V3, V4, etc. Now in the next slide, we shall also see an AMI lifecycle. The first thing you need to do is create a template in Amazon EBS snapshot then you need to register your AMI. After you have registered your AMI, you can then use it to launch new instances or you can use it to copy an AMI with the same region or different region. Now when you no longer require an AMI, you simply deregister your AMI. Now let's go back to the AWS Management Console where I'll show you guys how to create your own AMI. So guys, let me show you how to create your own AMI. In order to do that, you simply go to your instance, click on your instance that you have just created and click on action, click on image and click on create image. So we'll provide that a name and be as an AMI image for demo. The size will be HGB. Set everything to default and simply click on create image. As you can see here, your image has request has been created simply close that go back to ami and you can see here your ami image has been created and your status is still pending so this is how you create your own ami now coming back to the slide we have amazon elastic block storage so amazon block storage is nothing but a level block storage in today's session we will be discussing about amazon ebs volume Amazon EBS snapshot and EBS lifecycle manager. 
So coming to the first type, we have EPS volume, which is a durable block level storage device that you can attach your instances. Now, once you have attached a volume to an instance, the EPS volume can be used as a physical hard drive. Now, EPS volume are flexible as you can dynamically increase size, modify the provisional IOPS capacity, which is nothing but your input output operational per second. Now that we have understood what Amazon EPS volume is, let us understand what Amazon EPS snapshot is. Now, EPS snapshot are used for backing up data for your EPS volume to an Amazon S3 bucket snapshots. When I say they are incremental backup, it means that only the block on the device that have changed after your most recent snapshots are safe. Now, by doing this, it minimizes the time to create the snapshot. Thirdly, we have the lifecycle manager, which we can use to automate the creation, retention, and deletion of EBS snapshot and EBS pack AMIs. Now, secondly, it automatically copies snapshots that are created by a lifecycle policy to up to three AWS region. With Lifecycle Manager, fast snapshot restores enable you to restore volume that are fully initialized at the creation and deliver all the provision performance. And the fourth point is automated cross-account snapshot copy, which means it uses cross-account sharing in conjunction with a cross-account copy event policy to automatically share and copy snapshot created by a policy across accounts. Now coming back to the hands-on demo, I will show you guys how we can modify the EBS volume. In order to do that, go back to your instances, click on Ubuntu demo, click on the IP address, open putty, and simply paste your IP address, click on SSH, click on auth, and simply browse your key pair, there will be open to key for use, click on open, here you can write as open to, once the authentication has been succeeded, we will minimize the screen, so you guys will be able to see, we will type lsblk, and you can see here, that our EPS volume is 8 gigabytes, so in order to do that, click on launch instant, click on the instance you have just created go down to description and you can see here an EPS optimize click on the root device click on volume as you can see here size 8 click on action and click on modify volume and in this case I'll be changing it volume to 100 GB and simply click on modify and click on yes Click on close and go back to putty and type on lsblk and you can see here our volume has increased from 8 gigabytes to 100 gigabytes of this so that is how you modify your EBS volume now coming back to the slide we have networking and security in Amazon EC2 so the first networking that we will be looking into is host multiple website or multiple IP addresses now, what this does is, it hosts multiple websites on a single server by using an SSL certificate on a single server with a specific IP address. Now, it operates network appliances such as firewall or load balancer. They have multiple IP addresses for each network interface. Now, it redirects internal traffic to a standby instance in case your instance fails by reassigning the secondary IP addresses to the standby instances. And the second point we have is, Elastic IP addresses. Now, what is an elastic IP addresses? Elastic IP addresses is nothing but a static IP address, which is designed for dynamic cloud computing. An elastic IP address is allocated to your AWS account and is yours until you release it. Alternatively, you can specify the elastic IP address in a DNS record for your domain so that your domain point to your instance. So, guys, let me show you what an elastic IP address does. So, in order to understand what an elastic IP address does, some first thing you need to do is click on EC2 and go to your instances. As you can see here, I've already stopped or terminate the instance states. So, in this case, I'll be using an Ubuntu demo. As you can see here in the description, there is no IP address for this following instance. So, what if you require to add an IP address to this instance which have been stopped? So in order to do that, 
you simply go to an elastic IP and allocate an elastic IP address simply allocate once that is done simply click on the IP address so we'll be allocating this IP address to the stop instances that is Ubuntu demo so in order to do that simply click on associate elastic IP address and choose your instant this is an Ubuntu demo and click here on associate as you can see here is 3.7.138.126 right so in order to check that you can copy that and paste it in the next tab and go back there and simply click on your instance that you have stopped that is Ubuntu demo and you can see here that it's an IP address has been attached to your Ubuntu demo which have been stopped as you can see here 3.7.138.126 which is nothing but your static IP elastic IP address so that is how you associate your IP address to any instance which has been stopped or terminated the next thing we have is security groups a security group acts as a firewall for your EC2 instances you can add rules to your each security groups that allow traffic or from its associated instances they control the incoming and outgoing traffic inbound rules control the incoming traffic to your instance and outbound rules controls the outgoing traffic from your instance when you launch an instance you can specify one or more security group if you don't specify a security group Amazon EC2 uses the default security group the next thing that we're gonna look upon is key pair so what is a key pair a key pair is a set of security credentials that you can use to prove your identity when connecting to an Amazon EC2 instance now a key pair consists of a public key and a private key Amazon EC2 stores the public key on your instance whereas you store the private key the private key allows you to securely SSH into your instance we shall see EC2 use cases in the real-life application the first use cases is run cloud native and enterprise application now Amazon EC2 delivers secure reliable high performance and cost-effective compute infrastructure to meet demanding business needs and the second use cases is scalp for HPC application now it access the on-demand infrastructure and capacity you need to run HPC application faster and cost effectively and the third use cases is developed for Apple platform as the name suggests it is used for building testing and sign on-demand macOS workload access environment in minutes dynamically scale capacity as needed and benefit from AWS pay as you go pricing and the fourth use cases is train and deploy ML applications now Amazon EC2 deliver the broadest choice of compute networking and storage services purpose built to optimize price performance for machine learning projects now coming to the next part is how do we provision our EC2 instance now Amazon machine image or AMI is supported and maintained image provided by AWS it is basically a template for your instance to be launched firstly we need to create an Amazon machine image like I explained a while ago which is nothing but a template for your software operating system secondly we choose our instance type we have only looked at a table of different types of instance in the previous slide and basically the type is saying how powerful you want your machine to be how many CPUs memory storage or GPU you want to have thirdly you will configure the instances how many instances you want which subnet you want it to be assigning your IP address then its shutdown behavior where you can stop pause or terminate your instances now when you start an instances it has to have an operating system and that's a disk which is basically a storage and that storage is an EBS volume when we launch an instances we can add a tag they are value pairs which allow you to simply identify your instance and classify it and lastly you review your instance launch detail you can go back and edit changes for each section or you can click launch to complete your process this is just an overview on how to launch an EC2 instance which I have already showed you guys with a hands-on demo so in the next slide we shall understand what is load balancing in this video I will only give you guys an introduction as to what is load balancing since the topic itself is vast so getting back to the topic uh, what does a load balancing does 
Elastic load balancing automatically distribute your incoming traffic across multiple targets such as EC2 instances, containers, and IP addresses in one or more availability zone. What it means is that, say when you are streaming Netflix in India around daytime or evening time, the traffic will be huge. Since a lot of people will be streaming at the moment, what a load balancer does is it manages those traffic and distributes the load to another server which is available in different region or zone and increase the number of EC2 instances so the load is balanced without disrupting the overall flow and it increases the availability and fault tolerance of your applications. Now the next thing that we are going to discuss is auto scaling. Just as the name suggests, it monitors your application and automatically adjusts capacity to maintain steady, predictable performance at the lowest possible cost. So in order to understand what that means is let me give you an example. So in the daytime, a lot of people will be using the server. When that happens, auto scaling simply monitors and add more EC2 instances. So the server can perform its tasks without failing and when it's around midnight, the amount of people using the server will decrease. So the requirement of server is also decreased. So auto scaling scales out the extra server which is not required and scale up again if a lot of user is using it again. So that is basically what an auto scaling and a load balancer does. Now coming to the architecture, we will understand how we launch an EC2 instances. The first thing you need to do is select the region, whichever it's closer to you. Then we have a VPC. So we are simply using the default VPC in this case and we have the availability zone. And each VPC has a number of public subnet. In this case, we can use two. We can also have just one subnet. Now, if you guys are wondering what is the difference between a public subnet and a private subnet, in a public subnet, we attach an internet gateway and we have a routing table which point to that internet gateway. And our EC2 instances have public IP addresses. Those are the three things which you need. First, the EC2 instance must have a public IP addresses. We need to have an internet gateway which is attached to a VPC, but you need a route table entry which points to the internet. So that was all about Amazon EC2. If you guys liked the video, please go ahead and press the like button. Thank you guys for attending this session. Until then, see you guys again in our next video. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!